Hello everyone, and welcome to the second part of our arts lesson this third quarter period. This is the lesson under Arts Module 2 and Module 3. The main focus of this lesson is all about the neoclassicism and romanticism in the Philippines. At the end of this discussion, I will be showing the activities you need to answer. So listen attentively all throughout the discussion. Grab your pen and paper so you can write down important details from the lesson. Let's begin! In the Philippines, the ideology of neoclassicism and romanticism can be such seen through various artworks such as paintings, sculptures, and architectural structures, and well-known contributing artists express their skills and ideas on their own respective field of specialization. Now, I will introduce you to the famous Filipino artists that used neoclassicism and romanticism in their artworks. I know some of them are already familiar to you because some of them are heroes and national artists in our country. Let's start with Felix Resurrection Hidalgo y Padilla. He was one of the great Filipino painters of the late 19th century who was significant in the Philippine history for inspiring members of the Philippine Reform Movement. One of his famous paintings is The Las Virgenes Cristianas Expuestas al Populacho and the English translation of it is The Christian Virgins Exposed to the Populace. Here is the painting of Las Virgenes Cristianas Expuestas al Populacho. Take a look and observe what is being portrayed in the painting. The painting portrays two scantily clothed Christian female slaves being mocked by a group of boorish Roman male onlookers. Another Filipino artist is Juan Luna y Novicio. Juan was a painter and sculptor who became one of the first recognized Philippine artists. He was also a political activist of the Philippine Revolution during the late 19th century. One of his famous artworks was the Spoliarium, a Latin word referring to the basement of the Colosseum wherein the fallen and dying gladiators were dumped and devoid of their worldly possession. Here is a picture of Juan Luna's masterpiece, the Spoliarium. What do you think is being shown here in the painting? Let's find out. The subject of Juan Luna's Poliarium can be interpreted as an allegory of Imperial Rome corresponding to Imperial Spain. The image of the Romans dragging the dead gladiators symbolizes the colonial oppression of the indigenous populations. The painting also shows how the Filipinos were treated before when they were colonized by Spaniards. It shows that they were forced to entertain the Roman oppressors and the Spaniards with their lives and sacrifice themselves for the Romans and Spaniards' honor. Furthermore, they were just treated as if they value less than animals. Next Filipino artist is Fernando Cueto Amorsolo. Amorsolo was a national artist in painting. He was a portraitist and painter of rural Philippine landscapes and he was popularly known for his craftsmanship and mastery of the use of light. This is one of Omar Solo's famous paintings entitled Planting Rice. Planting rice reflects the arrival of the Americans in the Philippines and the idealism of the artist to the Philippine society. It also portrayed happy Filipino villagers in their bright clothes and straw hats worked together. Behind them, 
releasing a peaceful plum of steam, rises the beautifully symmetrical cone of Mayon Volcano. Another famous Filipino artist is Guillermo Estrella Tolentino. Tolentino is a Filipino sculptor who was named National Artist for the Visual Arts in 1973 and is hailed as the father of Philippine arts. Some of his best artworks are sculptures like the Oblation which is located at the University of the Philippines and another one is the Pambansang Bantayog ni Andres Bonifacio. The oblation in UP depicts a man facing upward with arms outstretched, symbolizing selfless offering of oneself to his country. The idea for the oblation was first conceived during the presidency of Rafael Palma, who was the one to commission Colentino to make the sculpture. The Pambansang Bantayog ni Andres Bonifacio is a memorial monument in Caloocan, Philippines which was designed by the national artist Guillermo Tolentino to commemorate Philippine revolutionary Andres Bonifacio, the founder and supremo of the Katipunan. Andres Bonifacio fought for independence from the politically and socially ruthless colonial rule by Spain. Finally, we have Napoleon Isabelo Veloso Abueva. Abueva is a national artist for sculpture. He was entitled as the father of modern Philippine sculpture. He has been the only Boholano to be given the distinction of national artist of the Philippines in the field of visual arts. One of Abueva's famous work is the Sham Nadiwata ng Sining. Let's find out who are this Sham Nadiwata that Abueva is referring to. This reinforced concrete work represents the nine muses of art, architecture, dance, film, literature, music, painting, photography, sculpture, and theater. The nude muses spread around atop a ring-like pedestal are rendered in various stances. And those are the famous Filipino artists and their artworks that used neoclassicism and romanticism. There are some of the neoclassical and romantic architecture during the American colonization in the Philippines based on an article on the internet by R.G. Chan and Associates. Here are the pictures of some buildings built that time. And that wraps up all our arts lesson this third quarter period. I hope you learned a lot about the neoclassic and romantic art period. Now, as I said earlier, I will show you the activities you need to answer in your arts module 2 and module 3. Make sure to complete all your activities in all the arts module this third quarter.
Alright, that ends our lesson for today. If you have any questions, you can reach me through this posted social media platforms. Thank you for listening and see you in our next lesson.